to the LMX files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky. And today we're going to use these tarot cards to do a oh my goodness check on the very talented, late Matthew Perry. We got you, bro. Let's go. So I am back in town. I hope you guys enjoyed all the IG posts of my adventures. It was a pretty crazy trip. I'll do an overall update, you know, on Instagram. So if you're not already, so if you're not already following me there, at the LNX files, dot dot dot, it's in the description. You know what I mean. So what's notable about Matthew Perry's death is that it happened on the day of the lunar eclipse. So this was a lunar eclipse in Taurus. It was the final lunar eclipse in Taurus that we're going to have for many, many years. And it was uh, opposing Mars and Scorpio. So that struck me right away about his death. The other thing that struck me, of course, is that many of us were wondering, you know, was this drug related? So, so far, you know, too soon to tell, but Matthew Perry was very, very open about his struggles with, you know, drug addiction, prescription pills, alcohol, all of it. Who here has read or listened to his autobiography, his memoir? If you have, you know, put a comment in the comments below. I've listened to it. I listened to it on Audible. He narrates it. So that's interesting. So it's like he's talking to you about his life, which is great. It's cool. What I will say is that, you know, it's very memorable, you know, especially when he describes like working on Friends and like auditioning for Friends and the first few seasons of Friends and just how they were like the New York Yankees and everything was just like falling into place and it just seems so faded and celestial. That's very memorable to listen to. There are times when he's narrating the book that he still does sound like very, very angry. Yeah, he sounds very, very angry. And I, there are times where I was like, bro, you shouldn't have any F-bombs in your memoir. <laughs> like, I just don't think you should. Like, call me old fashioned, but like, when it's time to write your memoir, maybe get to a place where you don't want to use an F word, okay? Just one woman's opinion. And also like, you know, there's still some anger <sighs> you know, floating around that bubbles up that you wonder like, you know, what else do you need? Like what else needs to be healed? So it's provocative in that sense, but it's mostly very insightful and very enjoyable. So totally recommend. So I pulled up Matthew Perry's chart because I was like, good golly, you know, he passed on the day of the, of the lunar eclipse in Taurus. So we take a look at his chart right here. So Matthew Perry is a Leo with a Leo rising moon in Scorpio. So how's that for a very powerful chart? I would not want to get into an argument with him. You know, these are all fixed sign. Leo, Leo, Scorpio, fixed, stubborn, in place. But, you know, reliable in some ways. He always said that, you know, even if he was just like bombed out of his mind, he never missed a day of work. So I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. You'd have to ask his castmates, but that's what he said. So what's interesting is that we've, we've done like maybe one other video on him. His wit is reflected in his natal chart. So if you see, he's got Mercury in his second house. So it's exalted in Virgo, uh, suggesting that his use of Mercury is going to be immediately tied to money, things of value, uh, financial success. So this suggests a very quick, very sudden, very unexpected Mercury, a Mercury that's very nimble and very quick on its feet and very innovative. And these are some of the things that people would say who have worked with him about how he could like, you know, adjust a punchline on a dime. You know, he, he was just all instinct. He was like a sniper that he could refine these jokes just very, very quickly from this very rapid fireplace of just like, uh, innate understanding of comedy. So that's cool. That's really, really great. So let's take a look at what was going on in the sky when he passed. So his eighth house ruler is Jupiter. So his eighth house is the house of death, rebirth, transformation, contracts, other people's money, karmic debts, but you know, also death. So if your eighth house ruler is doing crazy stuff in the sky, does it mean you're going to die? No, it doesn't. But surely on the day of your death, this planet in the sky should be doing something significant, right? Like, do you agree or disagree? I mean, can't we all just kind of agree on that? Like Tina Turner, when she passed, Uranus was in the exact same position in the sky as it was in her natal chart, if I'm remembering that correctly. It was just like lined up perfectly. So that was kind of eerie. What does it mean? Well, it's open to interpretation. So his eighth house ruler, which is Jupiter, that heavy hitting house, had been stationing over his sixth house ruler. Okay, and the sixth house ruler in his natal chart is Saturn. So his sixth house is in Capricorn. So 
The sixth house and the eighth house are known as difficult houses. They're more challenging houses, more challenging themes hang out there. So the eighth house we've already covered. The sixth house is like sickness, servitude, the drudgery of life, the routines we have to do in life and all of that stuff. But it's it's about like caring for the sick illness. It's also called Mala Fortuna. So now we have these two house rulers, you know, that are kind of lining up and interaction and interacting. So on the day of the eclipse, Jupiter, eighth house ruler, was at 11 degrees. His natal sixth house ruler, Saturn, was at eight degrees. So now they're three degrees apart in terms of lining up in a perfect conjunction. Three degrees in Hellenistic astrology is the realm of engagement. So that's when you can expect things to happen. You know, his house could have burned down. That would have been something significant that this could have suggested. You know, a family member could have gotten ill, but instead it was him. So meanwhile, we have other celestial bodies kind of tangoing in the mix. So his 12th house ruler, another very difficult house, a house of isolation, grief, loss, institutions, jail, mental institutions, separation, being separate and being placed away, and of course, grief and loss. So that house ruler for him is the moon. Now the moon is in constant flux. It's in constant, you know, movement around the sky. It's going up, it's going down, it's sneaking around the elliptic. So the moon is now the main player in this lunar eclipse, and it's directly opposite his sun, which is the ruler of, you know, his sun sign and also his ascendant. So the sun and the moon here are now major players and they're lining up across his fourth house and his 10th house access. Fourth house being home, family, and property across from 10th house public image. Very public death, you know, he's a public figure, he's gonna die publicly most of the time. So this to me looked highly, highly significant. Just knowing what the sun and the moon means for him in terms of his chart, that we are under a lunar eclipse and we have the sixth, eighth, and 12th house rulers involved. And you could say, but Lennox, this was not our first lunar eclipse in Taurus. We've been having them for the last two years. I would argue if you look up those lunar eclipses, they were at different degrees where they were not hitting Saturn in his chart. They were probably not getting so close to the eight degrees of Saturn in his natal chart. And that is how I would respond to that. So let's go. I've made up a list of questions about this. So if you have any other questions, if you want me to do a part two on this, we can do that. All right. So first question is drugs. Gotta ask. Drug related. They didn't find any. This is LA baby. You know, he's had a long fight with this addiction. What's going on there? Okay. One of the last, you know, lady friends to see him alive was a woman named Athena Crosley or Athen Crosley. She's 25. Bro, I wish he was a po at a point where he didn't want to hang out with 25 year olds. Like... At 54, I mean, if if anything, that's an indicator of someone who's got some more emotional heavy lifting to do. So what can you tell us about their relationship, him and Athena Crosley? Like, she refers to him as a friend. I assume they're hooking up. It'd be very naive of me to think otherwise, right? Okay, was he seeing any other women, and what can you tell us about that? I assume he was. You know, he's a famous TV actor, beloved TV actor in L.A., what can you tell us about why things didn't work out with Molly Hurwitz? So Molly Hurwitz was his last long-term relationship. She was a literary manager. She seemed very smart, very, very bright. They were engaged in 2021. They were engaged for a year before they called it quits. The reason they thought they called it quits is because Matthew Perry was TikToking a 19-year-old and they played 20 questions together, a 19-year-old on Raya. I was so disappointed to find this out. She said that like he's called her, he's caused her unbearable pain, but like, you know, she doesn't harbor any ill wills, the relationship. I can imagine. Can you imagine if you're engaged to Matthew Perry and then you find out he's like TikToking some like 19 year old? Oh my goodness. Oh, how devastating. So yeah, like what can you tell us about that? A 19 year old named Kitty Nichols or Kitty, Kitty Nickel. Look, Kitty, we wish you well. Please use your real name. Um, the reason that I think that this is so interesting is the Molly Hurwitz question is because if you listen or read, listen to his memoir or read it, he really talks about his regret about like not proposing to Lizzie Kaplan. He had a, uh, a four-year relationship with Lizzie Kaplan and it was totally on the low. It may have even been longer than that and how like he just wished he had the courage to propose to her because he really wanted to be a father and like have the whole family thing. 
did he really want that? Like, that's my next question. Did he really want to be a father or a family and have a family? Because he could have had those things. Like, it, they weren't so out of his reach, but the reason that I feel like he was, you know, running around, you know, hooking up online, at least with this TikToker, was because, like, you know, drug addicts will sometimes chase the fantasy. The fantasy and the illusion is it's just like, oh, this diaphanous thing over here is going to be so much better. And I felt like the idea of a family was also this kind of like fantasy for him. But like maybe he knew he didn't really want that in reality. Who knows? So is there anything else you want us to know about Matthew Perry, his life and death? Thank you. All right, let's get going. Okay, first question. Was this drug related? Um, hmm. Okay, so we got the Three of Cups upright. So Three of Cups, happiness and merriment in groups, that's all we know. Um, was it drug-related? <sighs> we know he was playing pickleball before he died. <sighs> was this drug-related? I wish we had a better card for this. Um, so we're going to hold off on interpreting them. I'm, this card, I'm going to pull an additional card for this one. Okay. What can you tell us about Athena Crosley or Athens Crosley or whatever her name is? Oh, okay. So we got the temperance card. So, you know, balance, balance, harmony, bringing things into a more even keel. So if she says that they were friends, I would believe based on this card that more or less they were, you know, that there's no big drama between them. If they're friends who are hooking up on the low, like there's no drama. It was like easy for them both, whatever it was. So, okay. No big story there, essentially. Were there other women that he's was running around with? And I know you probably think I'm very naive. Okay, uh, that's funny. So we got the Ace of Wands. So this is a card for, like, starting things. You know, the spark of something, the beginning of something, start of a journey. So he may have been sparking with other people. This is also, you know, a lot of phallic imagery here. So I think he was getting it here and there. <laughs> is how one could interpret this, right? So yeah, sparks were happening. You know, the, the match striking the side of the matchbox flame. So yes, uh, I would say nothing serious. You know, anything he was involved in was at the early stages, right? So that makes sense. Okay, what can you tell us about how things ended with Molly Hurwitz? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so we got the Hermit card. So the Hermit card is like, you know, really needing to look inward, like Dark Knight of the Soul type stuff sometimes where like you really have to just like look at the man in the mirror, look at the woman in the mirror for them both, you know, about like what was actually going on here. It's also a card of feeling deeply, deeply and utterly alone in these situations. You know, I'm sure she felt utterly alone who knows what was motivating his behavior, but whatever it was, like, this forced them both to do some deep, heavy, emotional, spiritual lifting because, you know, just feeling so alienated, so alone from that whole situation. I mean, it was devastating, is, is what this is indicating. Which we know, I mean, we all can infer that from this, right? Did Matthew Perry really want to have a family and get married did he was that what he really wanted in his core because that's essentially what he says in his book in some ways hmm. Hmm. <laughs> interesting this is an interesting way of putting it so we got the nine of cups in reverse so the nine of cups is like getting what you want but it's not a card of connection it's not a card of like couples or families it's like, oh, I got what I want. Like, I feel so satisfied. Like, I got the new car. I got the promotion. It's like, it's like solitary satisfaction, you know, which is fine. There's no judgments here. So this in reverse is suggesting that, like, he kind of did. It's like the guides aren't giving, like, a hard yes. But what they are emphasizing is that, like, all the solitary success and enjoyment he's had was not stabilizing him. It wasn't enough for him. It didn't really give him... Like, the feeling of joy that he was really after, essentially. So that's a very interesting way of putting it. Okay, and is there anything else you want us to know about Matthew Perry, his life or death? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I mean... Oh. I mean... 
Like, okay, I'm, all right. Let me know if you guys have any ideas about how to interpret this. So we got the Seven of Wands in reverse. So this is a card of letting go. Uh, it's a card of sometimes letting other people take charge. So upright is a card of standing your ground, telling the maddening crowd to sort of shush. So in reverse is a card of like, you're letting the current take you along. You're going with what other people are doing. You're not trying to fight things. So, I mean, that could just indicate that like, you know, the guides might be saying on some soul level, he may have known that it was his time. Like he may have had a feeling like, oh, like this is it. Like, and that he let go. Like when he felt like maybe his body start to shut down, he didn't try to fight it. He, he may have been set, faced with a sense of knowing is they might be talking about his death or they may have, be talking about his attitude in life before he passed. We need to pull two more verification cards. Okay. So we're gonna pull two more verification cards. One for was this drug related? And then another one for what the heck are you guys talking about here? All right. So first off, was this drug related? Hmm. Oh, um, never a huge fan of the Pentacles cards when it comes up for questions about drugs because the Pentacles can so easily represent tablets um, or, you know, money, drugs cost money, drugs are, you know, a form of currency in some countries. So the Queen of Pentacles destabilized could represent something like that. Yeah, it, it absolutely could. Um, so it's interesting that we're getting more Queen's cards coming up, but I'm not, none of them to me are shouting drugs or narcotics. They're just not to me, you know? It's just not. Okay. Seven of Wands in reverse. What else can you tell us about this? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting that the last thing that they're trying to drive home, so this last point, we keep getting sevens. So we got the Seven of Wands in reverse. Now we're getting the Seven of Cups in reverse. So Seven of Cups upright is like, oh, dreams, reality, what's a blessing, what's a curse? In reverse, it's like the shuttle has landed. So they're suggesting that whatever his soul came on its mission to do, like, at the point of his death, he got it. Like, whatever it was he got, like, he got it. Like, we know about all the damage he'd done to his body. We know about all the times he was in and out of rehab. We know about all those things. Like, he was at a point in his life where he got it. And what's interesting is, like, maybe he didn't need to have 20 years of sobriety to prove it to everyone, you know? Like, the soul's understanding is very mysterious at times. So that is what they're suggesting. Like something was understood, you know, shuttle has met earth and it was okay for him to kind of let go. So this is very interesting. So that's what I've got for you. Um, comment below, let me know. Let me know what you think of the drugs card because again, I'm not getting not terrific cards, but they're not very hard and fast. Like yes, substances were involved. So put your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know if you have any other questions you want us to do an additional reading on. Like and subscribe. And as always, we'll do this again.